Hey everyone, Adam from flyerheroes.com and today I'm back with our second flyer design tutorial. Uh, our first tutorial, which was published just over a week ago, has been met with some really great feedback. So if you'd like to keep receiving these tutorials and you would like to keep seeing uh, the videos that we produce, please just click that subscribe button on YouTube Give the video a thumbs up and of course comment with any thoughts or questions you may have. Alright, on to what we'll be doing today. Today we're going to create a club flyer and we're going to use a city image in the background which we're going to add a sort of static TV effect to. And in order to do that and, and to follow along with this tutorial, you're going to need a couple of assets. You're going to need this city image which can be downloaded for free from pexels.com. I will include a link somewhere around the video on Facebook or YouTube or flyheroes.com. Somewhere around this video that you're watching right now, there will be a link for you to download that image. You'll also need a free font called Montserrat. If you're a premium member on flyheroes.com or if even if you've used our free templates, it's quite likely you will have Montserrat installed already. All right, so let's jump in to this tutorial. I'm gonna open up the blank A5 template with Photoshop. I'm gonna start by painting or filling the background black. And I'm then gonna drag in our city image. So once you've dragged it in, just scale it up so it fills the page. And I'm just going to drag it across something like that. Okay, rename that layer city. And to add the, the static TV effect to this background image, we're going to need to use some filters from the filter gallery. So you'll see here the filter gallery option is, is grayed out. And that's because we're in CMYK color mode. Now, all of the templates that we release on flyheroes.com, we like to make them ready for print, so they are already in CMYK. For the purpose of this tutorial, we're just gonna switch into RGB color format. And to do that, you go to image, mode, RGB color. Click don't rasterize. Click don't merge. Okay, so now create a new layer, call it brush. Hit B on the keyboard, which is the brush tool, or you can go to this fella here, this little icon in the uh, left hand panel. And I have the brush set to 800 pixels, 25% hardness. I'm going to use a red color. You can use any color you choose, just don't use white or black and then set the background color to white okay uh, paint a rectangle around the inside of the flyer it doesn't need to be perfect in fact we actually want the slight unevenness to it because we're going to use this rectangle to create a sort of masked area let me not explain let's just move forward you'll see what happens all right, go back to the move tool. With the brush layer selected, click on filter and then go to filter gallery here. A new window will open and you, I already have it set up, but you wanna to go to sketch, half tone pattern, and then you wanna select the size and you wanna put that about eight and the contrast all the way up to 50. Make sure this pattern type here is on line we don't want it on circle. We can see what that does to change it here. You don't want it on dot. You want to make sure that it's on line because we need these horizontal lines to work with in our document. So once you've your filters applied like that, click OK. You'll see it update on the on the flyer that we're building. And then with the brush layer selected, I want you to go to channels and then I want you to click on green. OK, 
Okay, with the green layer selected, hold down the command key on a Mac or the control key on a PC and click on the layer thumbnail. And you're going to see all these marching ants, all the marquee tool is selected around the white. Okay, and turn the uh, RGB back on, select the RGB layer, go to layers, and with the brush layer selected, hit the back key. And that's going to remove most of the white. But don't worry, we want this sort of uneven edge. Okay. All right, so now we're going to go back to CMYK color mode, image mode, CMYK color. Don't rasterize, don't merge. Okay, so this this brush, these horizontal lines that we've created, let me just turn that on and off. We're now going to use these lines to select the same area of our city image. Now, I know this sounds confusing and I'm struggling to explain myself right now, but I'm sure it'll make sense when you see what we do. So with the brush layer selected, Again, hold down the command key or control key on a PC. And I want you to click on the layer thumbnail. Now you'll see the, the marquee icon appears again. See when you are, when you press the command key and hover over the thumbnail, click it. And that's going to select our entire layer, which obviously is all lines. Then select the city layer underneath and then duplicate. So hold down command or control on the PC and just hit the J key. All right, so what just happened? Well, you can see we've duplicated this city layer, but we've only duplicated the area that we had selected, which was obviously made from this brush. So turn off this brush and then here you'll see that we've got an equal selection from the brush of the city. So if I turn off the city image, you see those lines? That's what we've just created. So we're gonna rename this layer lines, and then we're gonna start adding the static TV effect to the background. So the first thing we do is we go to filter, distort, wave. Okay, you see that? This might need a little bit of playing around with. And if you want to pause the tutorial and just play with some of these settings, I would definitely recommend that. But I'll zoom in and you can see the settings that I've got here. So I have the number of generators set to four, the min and max at 205 and 248. I have the amplitude set to one and 14. And the scale is horizontal and vertical, both set to 100%. But one of the most important selections you need is you need the type set to sign. Okay, we're going to use the square type layer, but for starters, we're going to use sign. All right, so when you've got the wave settings like this, click OK. And you're going to see that those lines that we've just created have now got this sort of wavy effect added to them. So now duplicate that. I'm going to call it lines blurred. Drag it underneath. And then we're going to go to filter, blur, motion blur, and set the distance to about 200 pixels. And make sure the angle is on zero. So this means it's gonna, uh, it's gonna blur the lines horizontally. Click okay. Okay, now you'll see, we've just added that slight blur effect underneath the wavy lines. In fact, I'm gonna just reduce the opacity of that to about 70%. You can do that here, or you can simply click seven on the keyboard. All right, so now we need to group everything. So we've got our basic background set up. So I'm going to select all the layers and then I'm going to click command and G on the keyboard or control and G on a PC. And I'm going to rename this background. 
I'm going to right click, convert to smart object, rename that layer, background, and then I'm going to go to filter, sharpen, and then I'm going to go to filter and sharpen again. And obviously, if you don't want to keep doing that, you can simply click, you can simply press Command and F on the keyboard. When you press Command and F or Control and F, it will use your last filter. See that? Okay. So now we're going to add some horizontal lines that cover the entire page. So to do that, select the rectangular shape tool, which is this guy here. If it's not set to rectangle, just hold that, click and hold down, select the rectangle. So we need to draw about 200 of these lines across the page. Make sure they're rather thin like that. Set the color to black. Now, to change the color, the fill of this rectangle that we've just drawn, you can go up here to the fill and you can select your color there, or you can double click on the layer thumbnail and a little color picker box will pop up. So set that to black, line it up at the top. So it's not quite touching the top, but it's right at the top of the page. Then duplicate it. So you can right click and duplicate layer or hit Command and J on the keyboard. Drag the other one down to the bottom. Again, you don't want it touching the bottom, just bring it a little bit in. And we need to duplicate these layers 200 times. So the, the easiest way I find to do that is duplicate them so there's about 10. and then select all of those layers and duplicate again another 10 times and then I'm going to select all of those layers and duplicate them again alright so we have a lot of lines there select them all with the move tool selected press the distribute horizontal centers icon here which is going to evenly distribute those lines from top to bottom. And then with all of these lines still selected, press command on the keyboard and then E. And that's going to merge all the lines into one single layer. Okay. Rename that layer lines and then set the blend mode to overlay. So you can do that by either going to this box here and selecting overlay or by pressing alt shift and o on the keyboard now we're going to add a mask we're going to add like a vignette mask so that these lines only show up on the outside edges of the page so to do that select the marquee tool select the elliptical marquee tool make sure the feather is set to around 150 pixels and with the lines layer still selected from the middle of the document click hold down the alt key and then drag out towards the edges like that okay then I want you to invert this selection so you can do that by going to select inverse or by holding down command shift and I on the keyboard. Then on the lines layer, press this little mask tool down here and the lines are going to disappear from the middle of our page. Once you've done that, I want you to duplicate the layer. I want you to set it, set the color of the lines to white. I want you to reduce the opacity of the layer to around 40%. And then uncouple 
the layer and the mask by clicking on this chain icon and then nudge the white lines up a little bit. Should end up something like that. Group all of these layers together. Again, call it background. Then I want you to duplicate it. So right click, duplicate group or Command and J. Then right click, merge group. Rename this squares. So now we're going to go back to the wave filter tool and we're going to add those square effects that I mentioned before. So with the squares layer selected, go to filter, distort, wave. Now I'm going to zoom in so you can see this. Change the settings so they match mine. So the number of generators, you want that set to four. You want the wavelength set to 998 and 999. You want the amplitude set to a minimum of one and a maximum of 70. And then you want the scale set to 1% and 100%. In the type, this time we don't want sign, we want square. And make sure down at the bottom, the undefined areas repeat to the edge pixels. Okay, so once you've got it set up like that, click OK. And you're going to see this crazy square effect added to the squares layer. So if I just turn that off, and turn it on, you can see how our image has changed. But that's a bit of a drastic change. We don't want to keep it all. So I'm going to draw a mask around parts of this layer. So if you see how our layer has been divided up into four columns, I'm going to draw a rectangular marquee from halfway through the second column to halfway through the fourth column. So if you get this marquee, it, rectangular marquee tool uh, selected, make sure the feather is at 0%. And with the squares layer selected, just draw that marquee, something like that. And then again, invert the selection. So select inverse and hit the mask tool down here. Once you've done that, select the layer and change the blend mode to luminosity. Okay, so now we're really getting that sort of static broken TV effect happening over our city background. We can put this layer into our background folder on the top. Duplicate this group. and then merge it, call it sign, and then go to filter, distort, wave. Make sure your settings are something like this, the number of generators at 500, the min and max wavelength, 998, 999, the amplitude, minimum of one, maximum of 14, and then the scale, horizontal 1%, vertical 100%. Again, you know, you can play around with these settings, see what they do. Make sure the type is on sign. Sorry, I forgot to say that. Click OK. Now layer is going to go even more crazy. So select the eraser tool, which is E on the keyboard. I have mine set to 800 pixels, 20% hardness. And just delete some of this, some of the middle area. Okay. Again, you can just do this roughly. It doesn't have to be very precise. Set the layer blend mode to overlay. Reduce the opacity to about 50%. So that's pretty much all of our effects done. I'm going to drag this sign layer into the background and 
for the purposes of keeping it editable, I'm going to convert to a smart object. So there is no reason why you can't just flatten all of those layers. I'm converting it to a smart object simply for the purpose of keeping it editable should I need to go back and change anything later on. Rename this layer city and effects and then create a new layer, fill it black. I'm going to make this my background layer. Call that background, drag it underneath. Select the city and effects layer, sharpen it once. I'm going to filter, sharpen, sharpen, and then set the opacity to 80%. And now I'm going to add a color overlay to even out all these colors. So right now it's quite multicolored and it doesn't make a great background. So I'm going to add a blue color overlay. So sorry, if you didn't see what I did then, just double click on the layer, the layer style box will pop up, select color overlay. Um, I'm going to add a blue of something like that. So the number there is 4F8FCC. And then I'm going to set the, the color overlays blend mode to hue. Group these layers, call it background. And that's our background image complete. So we've added that sort of distorted broken TV effect. It kind of reminds me of a scene out of Cloverfield actually. But we've created this beautiful image and the standard layout of a flyer design puts the stock photo or a picture of a model or a picture of the lead performer at the top of the flyer and then the text at the bottom. But we've spent so, so much time making this beautiful image that we don't really want to cover that up. So I'm going to reverse it. I'm going to put our DJ names at the top of the flyer. I'm going to have the title in the middle. And then I'm going to place our stock image down in the bottom area somewhere. Okay, so let's get to work. Like the type tool, which is T on the keyboard. And I want you to select the railway font. Set it to extra light. And I want you to type the words blackout in white. We want to increase the size to about 100 points. And then drag it down so it's just Align it in the center, but just above, like that. Okay. Select the rectangular uh, shape tool, set the color to white, and we're going to extend this L shape, and draw a line off it like that. And drag it up to the top. Okay, I'm just going to zoom in and tidy that up. To get rid of this pixelated edge, I'm going to drag my rectangle, uh, rectangular shape, all the way down to the bottom of the L. Like that. And then I'm going to duplicate that and place it on the T as well. Okay, so that's our title. Black out. Group those layers, call it title, we'll color it red. And then I'm going to add in my stock photo. Now, I already have 
an image here that I want to use. I've already cut this guy out. He's like a handsome guy in a suit. Perfect for sort of black tie or uh, upscale style event. I've already cut this guy out. If you don't know how to cut out images in Photoshop, I would recommend just searching on YouTube. There's plenty of tutorials. Maybe I'll also record one soon. You can download the same guy as I have, or you can use your own stock image. I'm going to throw it into the corner here. I'm going to rename this uh, feature image, put that in a folder, feature image, color it green. Now I'm going to get to work adding in the rest of my text. Obviously, again, this is all sort of dummy text. Anything that you would use will change. You don't have to follow along with this. You can skip ahead and see how it turns out. But in this top area here, I'm going to put promotion company presents. Then I'm going to have the, the DJs with a small thumbnail of their face alongside their name, the sort of music they'll be playing. And then down in the footer here, we can put the date of the event, the location, the address, the URL, etc. Okay, so I have selected the Montserrat font, and I'm going to switch to the light weight. I'm going to set the size to 14 points, and I'm going to just go for a slightly dull color. I actually have something written down here, A2, A, D, A, F. And I'm going to write Flyer Heroes Promotions Annual Upscale Bash. And I need to reduce the height between those. Okay. Got that set at about 20. Just gonna line it up, up here. Okay. Maybe that's a little bit too big. Reduce it down to 13. And then we'll put the supporting act underneath. Set this to white. Set to semi bold, maybe extra bold. Reduce the size and line it up in the same place as our introductory text. You can actually snap a guide to the side of those so we can keep everything in line. Just move them across a little bit. All right. Group those, we'll call it intro, text, and then underneath we're gonna start adding our DJs. So create a new layer, select the shape tool, make sure it's white. You want the rectangular shape tool, sorry. And then draw a square between these guides. Now this is where we're gonna put a thumbnail of our DJ. Now I just think that might be slightly too big. Just nudge it down a little bit. I'm gonna move over the guide. I just wanna make sure I get it looking good. Okay, right, so we've got our thumbnail for the DJ. Next to it, we need his name, James Brown. I'm gonna increase the size of that text to around 18. Line it up with the top of our thumbnail. Nudge it out. Put 
underneath, I'm going to put that he is playing in room one. And he's playing drum and bass. This room one section, I'm going to reduce that to light. And then I'm going to reduce the entire text down to 11. Okay, put these guys together. Group James Brown and the text underneath. Call it name. And now I'm going to align them on the vertical centers with the thumbnail. And then group that as artist one. Duplicate. Call that artist two. Just drag it down. Duplicate again. Artist three. And then select all three artists and just evenly distribute the vertical centers with this button here. All right, okay, just so you can see what it looks like, I'm gonna change this text. You can play Electro House. All right, that is my DJs laid out. I'm quickly gonna add some images. I'll show you how to do that. So on this rectangle that we've made, call that clipping area. I'm gonna go to my stock photos. I'm going to drag in some images. Create a clipping mask. If you don't know how to create a clipping mask, sorry if you missed that. Um, place the image above the clipping area, that little square thumbnail that we made. Right click the image, select create clipping mask or hold down the alt key and move your cursor in between the two layers so you'll see this sort of arrow icon appear click and it'll create a clipping mask if your image suddenly disappears that's because it's not lined up with the clipping area underneath so you need to make sure they're lined up or else it'll disappear okay once i've got my image on top there I'm going to set the blend mode to luminosity to knock out the color because the, the background layer is in white. So when we set a colored image to luminosity, it's going to turn it black and white. For the sakes of being quick, I'm just going to pause it and add some images in. Okay, so as you can see, I just quickly added the rest of those images in. Now down here underneath the title, I'm going to add the date. So 10 08, 2018. I'm going to set this to hairline and just bump up the size a little bit. Got it at 51 there. I'm going to reduce that to 40 actually. Just line that up with the outside of the title and I'm going to rearrange it in my layers panel there. Group that, call it date. And then underneath, I'm just going to add the last little bit of our information. This time I'm going to draw a text box. So if you don't know how to do that, select the text tool, T on the keyboard. 
and then just draw a box like that. I'm going to set size to semi bold 11. And you can put your club's information here. And underneath, get more templates from www.flyerheroes.com. Reduce that size down so it all fits in nice. And let's select this URL text. I'm going to make that light or maybe regular. Reduce the leading. And then select this bottom text. Just drag that down a tiny little bit. Okay, tidy up this URL. I mentioned in the previous tutorial, I like to make the www and the .com on URLs small caps. I just think it looks a little bit nicer. Okay, so we're pretty much done here. I'm just gonna change some of these text areas. The supporting acts, I'm gonna make that a little bit smaller. Let's increase the tracking slightly. Fly Heroes Promotions, I'm going to reduce that as well. I'm going to make it regular. Apologize, just messing around with this. I am doing it on the fly. I tried to plan this tutorial a little bit better, but kind of went out the window. The last little thing I'm gonna do is this eye design has quite a flat style to it. So just to make it pop a little bit on our feature image, like I've used this guy here, I'm just gonna add a drop shadow. Just a little drop shadow to help him uh, pop off the page a little bit. All right, so if you just have a look at the settings, how I've got them there. The very last thing I'm gonna do is just alter the levels a little bit, just to make the page pop a little bit more, a little bit slightly brighter. So at the top of our layers panel, uh, we're gonna add a levels adjustment layer. So that's here. And then this middle toggle, drag it to the right a little bit. The right toggle, I'm going to drag to the left a little bit. Just to bring out those, those bright whites. Group that. Adjustments, color it blue. And there we have it. Our design is finished. I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. Don't forget to subscribe for more. It's been a little bit different from our previous tutorial. We focused more on creating that background image, that really cool distorted TV effect. So even if you don't use this tutorial to make flyers that look like this, I hope you learned something from creating that background. I know I certainly did. <laughs> okay, so thank you very much for watching. Again, if you have any questions, please just ask them in the comments, either on YouTube or on the flyerheroes.com blog post. Last of all, if you want flyer designs, if you want flyer templates, come check us out at flyerheroes.com. We have over 700 professionally designed flyer templates available for Photoshop. Thank you very much and see you next time.